We just woke up and uh, kind of crazy. We're just looking out at the river to think that uh, we're headed 40 miles that way. Whole time, three days, two nights, we will not be able to land on the other side. The St. Croix is a really special river because it really mixes all the elements that you need in a good canoe trip. It combines white water with swift water and, and sections that is very paddleable by all skill levels. All right, the honors to Chris, pushing off into the current. Here's the start of 40 miles, three days on the St. Croix River. Two novice canoeists out here, so we're gonna need all the luck we can get. First class one rapid. Didn't end up on the shore in Canada, crashed, so that's a plus. Big old bald eagle right here. Just flying right over us, right across the sun. Three miles in on the St. Croix, we've been seeing lots of beautiful campsites on the uh, Canadian side. It's a provincial park on that side. We've got our first point of interest here on the American side. Beautiful kind of rusty car. Number 18. September can be an awesome time to go paddling, but the water levels are a lot lower than they are in the summer months. So right now we're paddling at about 400 CFS. The beach is not a lot of space between the rocks and the water in our canoes. So bumping in to quite a few landmines. Yeah. We got an inch of water back here. I think when we first set out, we were pretty aware that Canada was literally right there. And that made us feel a little apprehensive. But now that we were almost 10 miles down river, that's all eroded in our minds. And we're sort of just out in the wilderness for kind of just in it. And all of a sudden borders feel pretty arbitrary which I think is pretty interesting given that we're in a global pandemic and as Americans, we're literally not allowed to go to the other side. So yeah, working through that. Word on the street is we are coming up to Little Falls, which is the biggest rapid on the whole trip, on the whole uh, 40 miles. A little apprehensive, a little nervous. Now hook right, hook right. <laughs> Not graceful, but we did it. We did it. <laughs> As we've been going down the river, the Canadian campsites have been really, really nice, and it's kind of the same today. Like, this isn't a bad campsite, but just across the way, it's definitely a better campsite. So, we'll just sit over here and be envious of our Canadian compadres. Something about being under the stars here in Maine with friends of old and new in front of the campfire. With everything going on in the world and to get away in the wilderness for a couple days, I think this is exactly what everyone needs right now. Looks like Canada survived the evening. Day two out here on the St. Croix. It is windy. Already ran aground a couple times on the shallow water portions. Chris even had to get out of the canoe. So one hell of a day paddling into 15 mile an hour headwind and 30 mile an hour gusts, which we definitely felt a couple times. One thing I didn't expect was the St. Croix to be this remote, this wild. I figured there'd be people, maybe a lot more camps, a little bit more signs of civilization, but in reality, we've seen two people, they were Canadian, 
and we've heard a logging truck and that's literally it this is about as remote and wild as you can really get it's hard in 2020 to go anywhere for three days and not have cell service and we've somehow managed to find a place in the world that actually can do that for you and I feel you know disconnected from the world in a really good way it's been a really uh quiet, peaceful experience. I didn't really have any expectations coming into this on what the St. Croix River would be. And it's just been beautiful, kind of a nice way to end the summer. It doesn't feel, you know, like there's a boundary here anymore. It just feels like, you know, a river in the wilderness. So while we're out here on the St. Croix River, I think we need to talk about the uh, the grandeur of the uh, latrine facilities here. Normally at a, at a campsite like on the Allagash or on the Appalachian Trail, you've got a, a dark, dank outhouse filled with spider webs. You don't know kind of what's down there, the plot monsters lurking, but geez, look at these. This is a throne. 